All right, in the last video, we defined what it meant for a function to be continuous at a number a. So we say a function f is continuous at a number a if the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals f of a. And remember that said three things. One, that f of a is defined. Two, that the limit as x approaches a of f of x actually exists. And three, that limit is equal to the function value at a. We also looked at graphic examples of where one of these conditions failed and how that showed discontinuity on a graph. And we want to kind of uh, extend this idea in a couple of ways. The first is we want to be able to talk about left and right handed continuity. Okay, so let's place A right here. And if I asked you, is this function continuous at A, you would say no. And it would be because, well, it would fail both 2 and 3. The limit as x approaches a of f of a, f of x doesn't exist because the left and the right handed limits don't match. Okay, so we know this is not continuous at a. However, it does have continuity on some kind of level on either side of a. So we actually do define what it means uh, left and right handed continuity. So let's put a little definition here. We say a function f is continuous from the left, and I'm going to put in parentheses right because this definition will hold on either side, is a continuous from the left at a if the limit as x approaches a from the left of f of x equals f of a. And likewise, I'll put that in parentheses, the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x equals f of a. So a function f is continuous from the left at a if the limit as x approaches a from the left of f of x equals f of a and it is continuous from the right at a if the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x equals f of a. So if we look at the graph right here we see, let's see, the limit as x approaches a from the left of f of x equals L1, which is also equal to f of a, right? My function at a is also L1. So my function is continuous from the left. Let's see what happens from the right. The limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x equals L2, which is not f of a. So my function is continuous from the left and is not continuous from the right. Okay? Now, we want to extend this idea beyond continuity at a number. So we have this new definition, and this is more in line with probably what you all said when describing what it meant for a function to be continuous. So a function f is continuous on an interval i if it is continuous at a for all a in i. That means for whatever interval I choose, I could choose my i to be just this piece right here or it could be the whole number line. If I never pick up my pencil on whatever my interval is, then I would say that it is continuous on that interval. That is, it is continuous for every a value in that interval. Alright? Now let's list a few of our common and familiar functions. So here's our some continuous functions we know. Some familiar ones. Well, polynomials. I'm going to change to a not such a fat pen. So polynomials are continuous on the whole real number line, so everywhere. Sine and cosine functions are continuous on the real number line. So if you can visualize th these graphs or examples of these types of graphs, you realize you never pick up that pencil when you sketch them. 
Um, we know not all trig functions are continuous. For example, the tangent function has asymptotes at odd multiples of pi over 2. e to the x is continuous on the real number line. Now we have a few functions that, that are continuous everywhere they're defined. So we say they are continuous, I'm going to say, on their domain. And an example would be the log function. Log of x, well remember we can't take the log of a negative number, so it is continuous for all uh, positive numbers. Rational functions, they're continuous everywhere on their domain. So they're continuous everywhere except where the denominator is 0, right? Because that's how we find the uh, domain of a denominator. Rational function. And there are many, 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 many more, but these are our common ones. And so that'll be helpful uh, to us in many of the problems that we face. Now, let's look at how we might be able to determine continuity um, of an equation. Okay, so if I gave you this function, f of x equals x squared minus 3x minus 10 all over x squared minus 8x plus 15, and I said, what are all x values? for which f is continuous. Well, this is a rational function, right? A polynomial over a polynomial, which means it's continuous everywhere on its domain. So this question becomes, what is its domain? Because it's continuous everywhere on its domain. And remember, with a rational function, the way I find its domain is I find the zeros of the denominator and I throw them out. So let's factor both top and bottom. The top factors to x minus 5, x plus 2, which you can easily verify. And the bottom factors to x minus 5, x minus 3. Now, what is tempting and wrong is to say that this function is actually equal to x plus 2 over x minus 3. Now, this is not true. It's only equal to this when x is not 5, OK? So if I make the mistake to equate these functions and then answer the continuity question, I might then say, oh, the only place where this function is not continuous is at 3. And you would be wrong, because it is also not continuous at 5. So x cannot be 3 or 5, OK? What happens here, if you remember from pre-cal days, is there is a hole at 5. And remember, that means I have to pick up my pencil at 5. What happens here is an asymptote, which is also a violation of continuity at a point, or at a number. OK, in the next video, we're going to look at piecewise functions and see, and see if we can determine continuity of those.